Hey, how's it going guys? Jackson here with Toasty DIY and today we're going to be talking about is it worth having a car lift at a residential house? So this is the Titan SDPL 7000. So a little bit of an older lift. I don't think that they sell a specific one anymore, although Titan is still in business and they still do make lifts if you're interested. But this one here is rated for, as it says, I believe 7,000 pounds. I'm assuming that's why it's in the model name. I know that it's a pretty uh, relatively light lift. It doesn't, um, you know, pick up a ton of weight. 7,000 pounds, though, will get you most of your uh, basically any car and then I would say most trucks I think my Tacoma probably weighs like I don't know three to four thousand pounds probably in the four thousand area but uh, yeah so this is a four post lift um, you can get a couple different kinds so I would say the main two lifts um, that, that you'll commonly see are a two post and a four post so another one that they call four post is a drive on lift or a drive on rack so this one is called that because you basically drive the vehicle onto it a two post lift basically just uses well just as i said two posts and then there's little forks that come out um, and you basically swing those out under the vehicle's frame rail to lift it up those are a little bit more annoying to use because you actually have to as we call it rack the car um, you know basically you gotta park it you know to where a post is about right here and then put a fork there like a fork there and lift it up you know and every car is different sometimes the you know frame rails are in weird places and the lift points are in weird spots some cars don't even really have the best you know spots to lift from so that is one thing to keep in mind with the two post but obviously with the two post lift you do have a lot more freedom because you're literally lifting from the frame rails so doing brake work and uh you know tire work it's like that's a lot easier because in a four post you really can't easily do that stuff unless you have one of the ones that has um, like the hydraulic part under the lift um, or in my case you know I kind of just keep a jack over here a lot of times just so I can just you know lift it up and you can always put a car on jack stands on lift if you want it's not the safest thing to do but you can do that the other thing that's really nice about four posts compared to two posts is I've never seen a two post that doesn't need to be bolted in the ground however four post a lot of times they don't have to be bolted in the ground however they, sh they probably should um, you can see this one does come with bolt mounts and everything but one thing that's unique about this one is that it actually comes with wheels um, that are not attached you can take them on and off to to be able to easily move the lift around um and another nice thing is I can actually lift this up without it being bolted in the ground. Uh, there's certain lifts that you're able to do that with. I mean, they say if you're using it, you know, day in and day out, you should probably bolt it in. Um, or if your surface is even somewhat unlevel, I suggest bolting it in. Um, but, you know, in, in my case, I, I, yeah, there is some floor cracks and stuff. But uh, it's, it's one of those things where I don't ever lift anything heavier than my Datsuns, which usually weigh a little over a couple thousand pounds. Um, and I'm also not lifting at the max lift point. That's another time that you should probably have a bolt it down as if you're lifting all the way up but all things aside um you know should you have one at a residential address or not well i guess i would say it depend it depends on your uh, use case so obviously if you're making money working on cars i highly suggest having one of these if you have the room um i can tell you that i've had mine now for about two years and it it has changed the way um for me working on cars like it's one of those things where um you know, now that I've had it, I'm kind of spoiled with it. And if I ever had to like get rid of it or, uh, you know, if it ever broke down, I would probably save up to get another one because if I'm being honest, they aren't that expensive for, for what they're capable of. Um, this one here, I think retails for probably, I don't know, somewhere between 15 and $1,800. Um, and I mean, to me for that price, I mean, a, a good Jack alone can be over a hundred dollars, you know, and then you're paying an extra, you know 50 to 100 for for okay stands um and so at that point i'm like for 200 dollars already I'd, I'd rather just save up uh and have this lift because especially if you're going to be making money um working on cars this just makes it 20 times easier it makes it a lot less back breaking um you know than having to constantly uh you know jack up a car and put it on stands and everything and especially there's a lot of people out there that don't use stands i you you're you are absolutely supposed to use stands don't ever leave anything you know on a hydraulic uh jack of any kind and that's even the same for this lift you're not even supposed to lift this up um and and not lock it you know what i mean like basically when you lift it you have these little uh locks that it actually um, locks onto and so you don't ever want to leave it you know using the hydraulic ram that's under the ramp so 
Another thing you got to keep in mind with a lift is most of them are going to be uh, 240 volt. Um, so, you know, you're going to be pulling a lot of amperage and a lot of voltage. So you're going to need some, a lot of, you know, special electricity ranges for your lift. Um, in my case, I have it on 110 and it's running off of a 40 amp breaker uh, straight to the um, panel in my house. And so that's one of those things where this, this lift pulls about, let's see, uh, 26 amps, as it says right there. And it's just, well, if I can... There we go, 26 amps, um, and you can see that it's single phase, so 120 volt, um, and it even says right there, or 110 volt. So, I mean, I really do love this lift, though. I haven't really had any major complaints about it. I actually was able to get it on a, on a trade, essentially. I did a bunch of work for um, a really nice guy, and uh, he ended up trading me the, the lift for all the work that I did on, on his vehicle a while back. So, so another question that you should ask yourself um, when thinking about getting a lift is, you know, how big is the thing that you're going to be lifting? You know, like I said, if it is going to be anything over, I would say like 3,500, 4,000 pounds, you should really bolt your lift down. So keep that in mind. And you're going to need to be able to drill into concrete and everything. Um, on top of that, how high is your ceiling? That's going to be another big factor. So in my case, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lifting up this convertible a lot. I can lift this almost all the way up because, well, it's open. So the garage lift motor can basically go inside of it when I'm lifting. Um, 2DZ is, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a different story. Even with the garage closed, I can only get it, I would say to about you can actually see there's tape on these which a lot of people do just to let you know you know where you should lift to I can lift to about here which to give you an idea my head heights up to about this one which is like the max and this one does have a relatively low lift clearance I think it's only uh, five and a half maybe six feet actually it's probably about five and a half feet um, so you know it's one of those things where you do probably still have to use like a, like a rolling chair which i have two over there it's one of my favorite things to do is you know just lift it up a, a couple notches and then just use the rolling chair to get under there's times where i've even lifted it up just to the the first length there and i just use an actual creeper which is still a lot nicer than having to like i said jack the car up it, it's it's phenomenally different i'm actually going to go ahead and just let you guys see what it's like to lift this you'll probably notice the lights slightly dim um, like i said it's just part of you know pulling 26 amps from a, a single breaker in a house and this is another nice thing too is I haven't even used this lift in probably like a month and you know it's one of those things where they're they're very resilient you shouldn't have to service them super often or anything but always look out for leaks and stuff all right so you guys remember I told you about the lock all right, so there we go. We just hit past the first lock. So now this is the uh, hydraulic rim release. I'm just gonna slowly let it down onto those locks. And now everything's locked. You know, we can see the, everything's nice and stable. You know, I can get up here with my foot and try to kick stuff and the lift's not gonna move. So like I said, um, you know, it's, it's very nice having them. Like this is only the first notch and I can already get all the way under my car. I, I can pretty much crawl under there right now. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things where if you uh, work on cars enough and you feel like it's a worthy investment, then you know you should you should definitely uh, look into getting one. Uh, a lot of times you can actually have them delivered and installed or set up for you. There is a lot of companies that will you know come out, build them, and then bolt them into the ground. But keep in mind, you know most of the time they don't just come built like this. At least two posts are probably a lot easier, and because uh, they're just two separate posts, or you know a lot of times they're just two separate posts and they have like a beam going across the uh, top. But usually with the four posts you're, they're going to come in uh, four different pieces you're going to have two separate ramps and then you're going to have uh, two of the actual uh, towers as they usually call them um, just depending on what type of four post you have there's there's a few different styles or somewhere they have like a rail going over top and that's where the ram is this one the hydraulic rams actually that's why that's there is it's going under this whole entire ramp here so you have one ramp that weighs freaking 500 pounds uh, and then the rest of it's not super heavy you can do a lot of the stuff with I would say like three to four people um, you know with with no equipment or if you want to use like a cherry picker or a forklift or whatever it makes it to where you know you can do it as as one or two people so i hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's video um like i said if you have any questions about you know lifts or you know if they're worth it or not uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and we'll see you guys in the next one